Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 27. In this video, we'll be making a simple quest tracker in our canvas to show our current quest progress. So first, I'll go to Die Quest window, and I've renamed Kill Zombies to Assist the Blacksmith, and then I've added text as well. The key is what we update when we actually kill them, and the text is what we'll show in our quest tracker. So those are our three values we'll be using. The quest name, the text, and then our current value and our target value. So let's move over to our RPG UI scene. I'll enable 2D and press F on the canvas. Now we want to make the quest tracker holder, so to speak. This is what's going to hold the prefabs. And what I mean by that is when we accept a quest, we'll instantiate a image and text components into the quest tracker to show that specific quest condition. So I will want to make an empty game object. But if I make an empty game object, it's going to have a transform, not a rect transform. So I will make a image and remove the image component. Now we have an empty GUI game object and I will set that to be anchored to the top right of the screen. I'll click on the crosshairs, Alt, Shift, left click, top right, and I want the width to be about 350 in this case, and let's move it down about 100 pixels, so that's a position Y of negative 100. The height also doesn't matter because the this is just what's going to hold the prefabs so I'll set the height to 10 for example I'll also rename this to quest tracker I want to give this game object a layout vertical layout group so that everything inside stacks on top of each other I'm also going to set the child alignment to upper right um, just so that hopefully that helps. I had some troubles in the past. Hopefully that keeps the stuff inside at or below this area. I'll turn off Child Force Expand and let's make our next game object. This is what's going to be instantiated inside. I'll make an image and I'll give it a black color that's semi transparent. The width was 350, and once again the height doesn't matter because it'll grow based on how much text it has inside. So I'll set that to 10 as well. I'll name this GUI Quest Prefab. This game object, I'll add a layout element, and here we can tell it to stay at 350 pixels. So I'll set the min width and preferred width to 350. I'll also add a vertical layout group so that everything inside stacks on top of each other. This time I'll do a padding of 5555. Five, five. I'll change these like so. And last but not least, let's add a content size fitter from layout content size fitter. And I'll set this to preferred, preferred. Now let's go to a we'll make it we'll make a child. So I'll do UI text. But I don't want the text here because let's say this is the quest name. I want to have a quotation marks and then the quest name and then quotation marks. But if I set the text on this game object to the quest name, I lose my quotations. So I'm actually going to turn this into three text game objects. To do that, I'll use a horizontal layout group. So I'll remove the text component. Let's add a layout horizontal layout group, like so. And I'll use a layout element as well so that I can specify the height. I want my min and preferred height to be 40 pixels. 
Now inside, I'll name this quest name. And inside I want three text game objects. Like so. The first text game object will be quotation marks. The second text, let's call this, since this, um, I'll name this text. This one will be the quest name. And the last one will be more quotation marks. I'll name this game object with brackets so that we know to rename it while working in PlyBlocks. The text is looking pretty blurry, so I'm going to change the font. And then I'll use a size of 39 or so. Also, if the quest name is too long, the text disappears. So I'll check best fit so that the text shrinks itself appropriately. I'll also center these and we should be good. And just as a test, I'll copy and paste this to make sure that our parent, which has the black background, grows with us, which it does. Unfortunately, it's moving upwards. Here is the parent, 100 pixels down from the top right. Here is the prefab we just instantiated. But if another quest, another text game object gets put in, the prefab moves higher than its parent. So I'll grab the prefab, grab its anchors, and I will alt shift click on the top right, or the, the top middle. So now hopefully it stacks appropriately. Now under the quest name I'd like an underline or a divider. So I'm just going to make a UI image and this will just be a white square but I want it to be a max height of 2 pixels, so I'll add a layout element with a min height of 2 and a preferred height of 2. I'll also set flexible width to 1 so that it can grow based on the size of the tooltip. And I'll name this divider. Next I want to make the condition so I will simply make a image, remove the image component, and now this is an empty game object, and I'll call this conditions. And inside, I can have however many quest conditions. Uh, I will copy quest name and put that in the conditions. Let's rename this to condition 0, the first condition of the quest. Now the parent, the empty game object, doesn't have a vertical layout group, which is why my UI broke right here. So I will add a vertical layout group with these settings. And now my condition stacks appropriately. But inside, I don't want quotations, quest name quotations. Let's do... In brackets, let's name this condition. So this might say monsters killed. And the next game object would be zero. So that's going to be our current value. And I'll make one more. This is going to be just for looks, it's a slash. And then one last game object, and this is target value. So now we have our quest tracker, 
which is where the prefabs go, the GUI quest prefab, which we will instantiate. Let's actually, as a test, copy and paste this, and they stack on top of each other nicely. GUI quest prefab. Inside, we've got our quest name with the horizontal layout group so that the text game objects stack horizontally. Quotations, quest name, quotations. Two pixel high divider image and our conditions with condition zero and we're going to pull the value condition pull the value current value and pull the value target value all from the quest itself now we're ready to set up the ply blocks first and foremost I need to turn this quest GUI prefab into a prefab so I'll drag it from the hierarchy into my project window and I'll turn that prefab off. Now we need a way to instantiate this prefab into the quest tracker game object. So on my player, I will add the ply blocks dieq on quest accepted and we are going to do object create instantiate and we want to create an instance of the prefab and we need to set a reference so I will do variables, temp variable, and I'm going to leave it named the default var. Now we want to set the parent object set parent. And we're doing this because when we instantiate it, it's going to get dumped into the hierarchy. But we want it to be a child of the quest tracker. So we're setting the parent of get temp game object to and we could make a reference so that we don't have to find by name but that'll work for now find by name quest tracker now right after it gets created it's going to be placed as a child very important that you uncheck world position stay otherwise our scale will be messed up on the prefab so instead of a 1 by 1 by 1, it's going to be something crazy like 2.7 by 2.7 by 2.7. So we definitely need to make sure we uncheck world position stay on the set parent block. Last but not least, we want to set a reference to our current quest, the quest we just accepted. You'll see that on quest accepted event comes with a temporary system object, quest obj. So on the prefab, I'm going to add a ply blocks component with a system object quest. I'll name it quest SO so we remember that it's a system object. And here on the players on quest accepted, let's set quest SO in the ply blocks of the temporary variable we'll use get temp blocks two and that was quest obj a temp system object get temp system object quest obj so that's done when we accept the quest it will be instantiated in but now we need to set the text which I've put in brackets so we have four things to set, the name, the condition, current value, and target value. Let's do that now. In the ply blocks, we'll say on start, we can set the quest name, GUI set text on quest name to, let's do a common as string, And we'll just use, we'll just grab the name of the quest. Let's also set condition zero and the target value. So I'll copy this block 
and this time we're setting the condition and that will be using the get property block as string get property and we want the text if we look over in diaquest we want the text of condition 0 get text from diaq get quest condition condition 0 in which quest that is this one, quest SO. So that's our condition. And we can also here set the target value. And instead of grabbing text, let's grab target value, lowercase t, capital V. That's using the get property block. We can't, we, well, we could set the current value on start, but after we kill a zombie it will no longer accurately represent our current value, so we'll put that in an on update, and I'll copy that block, and let's set current value to, using the get property block, it's called performed times with a lowercase p capital T. So now we're setting the name condition, target value, and perform times, or current value. Last but not least, we don't want this prefab to stay here forever, so let's do, I'll do a separate on update, just because, and we're going to say flow if a equals b, and we're checking if the diaq get quest status You'll see it returns an integer. We're going to see if the integer is 3, if the quest has already been rewarded, we'll delete ourselves. So that's integer of 3. We'll do an object destroy. And that's diacuse status of quest. And we'll use as string quest so. All right, I think that's it. I will turn off the prefab since it doesn't that quest hasn't been instantiated yet. And let's go back to town and give this a try. Hopefully everything works. All right. We have the quest Assist the blacksmith, monsters killed, zero of two. Let's go inside and see if our current value gets updated. And lastly, let's turn in this quest to see if this prefab gets deleted. That's all for this one. As always, thanks to those who have donated, and thank you for watching. If you learned something, hit that like button and join me next time, where we will expand this system just a bit more so that it has support for multiple quest conditions.